It's a startling statistic of what's happening in communities around the country, sadly, including here in our community with the Oxford High School shooting. So far this year, there have been 332 mass shootings in this country. And what do we know about the people carrying out these attacks? Media reports suggest a disturbing pattern in some, a convergence of angry young men, easy access to weapons, and violence reinforced on social media. Our Sandra Ali's talked to experts to help understand this, Sandra. Yeah, Pam and Jason, you know, experts at this point really continue to research some of the similarities in these recent massacres and what they can learn by taking a look at some of these patterns. Tonight, experts in both child safety and mental health are weighing in with some of the similarities and some of the patterns that they're noticing. I have two boys, uh, one who just graduated high school. So the, so the horror that we all have, right? And at the same time, this feeling of why does this keep happening? Clay Cranford is a retired sergeant from the Orange County Sheriff's Department and a child safety expert. He's one of many investigators researching mass shootings and how they unfold. Human beings, by and large, are predictable. Like, we go through a certain step of planning, preparation, things that we do to accomplish any goal. Their goal, you know, in this case, is going to a particular place and hurting people or, or actually to, to kill people but they have to go through those steps. Cranford points out six out of nine of the deadliest mass shootings in the U.S. since 2018 were carried out by young people, specifically 21 or younger. In the Buffalo and Uvalde massacres and now Highland Park, the young men followed a similar pattern, even down to posting pictures. The shooters fit an age range between 15 and 25. We have a saying in psychology that anger is depression turned outward. So with boys traditionally being socialized to suppress, you know, their emotions when they are feeling sad, when they're feeling frustrated, instead of doing what girls typically do, they talk about it or they express their emotions, boys will lash out or it will um, manifest itself in anger or violent acts or increase aggressiveness. Mental health experts like Dr. Rose Moten consider that age range often a difficult time, especially for young men. There are hundreds, if not thousands, God forbid, young men right now that are identifying with the Uvalde shooter. Which is frightening. Which is frightening, which is frightening. Because there is, we've heard, we know it's copycats that um, go, because for the first time, someone is being recognized. They're, they're getting the, the, the coverage. They're getting um, the, recognition. the recognition, validation. Another disturbing detail authorities discovered? The last person who was successful is the blueprint. We've had other people since Col Columbine was kind of a watershed moment, right? And most school shooters will often be Googling and looking them up. And, and I think it's also there's also some kind of reverence for them. I think they admire them in a way. Um, they, may, they may feel like, hey, this person, I'm a kin, right? This person felt dejected. This person felt rejected. This person, this person had expressed the kind of feelings that I have. If we don't understand the whys, we won't fashion a solution. So early childhood trauma, you know, uh, parenting, violence in the home is a big factor. Bullying. Uh, all of these things can go into just really creating this this perfect recipe of a mass shooter. And experts do say the best advice for parents, try to have age appropriate conversations with your children at home. They say it's best for them to have a heart to heart with mom and dad or a trusted adult and get that information from you instead of hearing about it the next day at school. Back to you. And Sandra, Clay Cranford speaks around the country and actually teaches school safety. Mm -hmm. So what does he want to see happen in schools in particular? Yeah, great question. You know, uh, Clay says that he talks to school leaders that he works with, and he says that he believes districts should take it upon themselves to make sure that teachers, staffers, everyone who works at the school knows how to properly identify warning signs, know how to properly identify certain behavior, and actually be able to report that behavior. All right, Sandra, thank you.